we will now take up the third part of the inner ear that is cochlea. This cochlea is actually uh, two things combined. There is a cochlear duct which is the part of the membranous labyrinth and as we said this structure is placed in the same shaped bony part. So that bony part is known as cochlear canal. These two things together make cochlea. That means cochlear, cochlear canal that is the part of the bony labyrinth and cochlear duct which is the part of the membranous labyrinth. These two things together make cochlea. This is a coiled tube and it shows two three-fourth coiling. Two three-fourth coiling. What does this mean? That if we are talking of cochlea, which is a coiled tube, suppose it starts from here. This is one turn, that is complete 360. This is second turn and two-third. So this much, sorry, this is two-third. So two-third turn is shown by this coiled tube that is cochlea. Now when we draw the structure of cochlea it is very difficult to understand the structure in this coiled part. So normally what we do is we straighten it, understand the structure and then we visualize how that coiled part would be. So here I am drawing a straightened part of cochlea. This cochlea is divided into three chambers. So this is the complete tube that we are drawing here. It gets narrower towards the end. Even more narrow we can make it here. And there are three compartments. Here we are seeing two structures. These are actually the oval and the round windows. So this is the oval window. If you are able to remember the middle ear part, we said middle ear anteriorly is connected to the tympanic membrane and posteriorly to cochlea through this oval window. So this is the place where this connection is seen. And this is the round window which is also known as fenestra rotunda and this acts as a pressure reliever. We'll see when we come to the function. Now there are three compartments. The upper compartment is known as scala vestibuli and it is filled with perilymph. Filled with perilymph. Perilymph is a fluid which is very much similar to the cerebrospinal fluid. The middle compartment is known as scala media and it is filled with endolymph. Filled with endolymph. Endolymph is more similar to the uh, intracellular fluid. The lower compartment is known as scala tympani and it is also filled with perilymph. So this is filled with perilymph. So there are three compartments, the upper and the lower are filled with, sorry, perilymph and the middle one is filled with endolymph. Upper and lower compartments, they are also connected at the tip. Here if you can see the upper compartment and the lower, that is scala vestibuli and scala tympani are connected by a narrow tube. This is known as helicotrema. So this narrow connection between scala vestibuli and scala tympani is known as helicotrema. And through this, this perilymph of both the compartments is connected. The middle one is filled with endolymph. Now here we will write down the names of these membranes also. The middle compartment has a membrane which makes its roof. This is known as resonance membrane and 
the floor of this compartment is again made up of a membrane and this is known as bacillar membrane. So there are two membranes, one making its roof and the other making its flow. On the bacillar membrane are present the sensory cells. All these sensory cells are grouped together and that structure is known as organ of corti or it is also known as organ of corti named after the scientist whose name was Alfonso corti or Alfonso corti. So there are two types of cells, the sensory cells and supporting cells. Now here we are drawing those cells, sensory cells, these are the sensory cells. Let us make few more here and in between there are two types of supporting cells, some taller supporting cells and some short. So these are the taller supporting cells and there are some smaller ones also. So let us make these smaller cells also here, which are supporting. Sensory cells at the upper end have stereocilia. So here there are stereocilia, which are stiff, non-motile cilia. And from the lower end arise the nerve fibers. So from here, these nerve fibers, they arise and all of them, they join to form the cochlear branch of the auditory nerve. Cochlear branch of auditory nerve. So these nerve fibers, they actually, because this is a sense organ and we know auditory nerve is a sensory nerve. So this together, they form a branch, which is the cochlear branch. And finally, it joins the auditory nerve. Now, just before, this entire structure is the organ of corti or organ of corti. This is organ of C-O-R-T-I. Some people call it corti, some people call it corti. Named after the scientist Alfonso Corti. Just before this organ of corti, there is a membrane. So from the bacillar membrane arises a membrane, which is actually a gelatinous membrane. This is known as tectorial membrane. This one is a tectorial membrane. And this sensory hair, they are actually embedded in this gelatinous tectorial membrane. Now, when it comes to hearing, how exactly we are able to hear or gather those sound waves and interpret it? This is the part that is the oval window. This is the part to which Steppes was attached. In the middle ear, there are these three ossicles. The smallest bone is the Steppes and this Steppes is attached to the oval window. Now when the eardrum, that is a uh, tympanic membrane, it vibrates by the sound waves. The sound waves are transferred to three ear ossicles, that is malleus, incus and steppes. Now when steppes is vibrating, it is letting or it causes the vibration of the membrane of oval window. These vibrations come into the perilymph of scalar vestibuli. This starts to vibrate, this generates a pressure on the resonance membrane. Because of this pressure on resonance membrane, endolymph starts to vibrate plus the vibration, vibrations from this helicotrema come into the lower compartment and here also the perilymph starts to vibrate. When perilymph vibrates, the bacillar membrane also moves. When bacillar membrane moves, these sensory cells, their orientation changes because they are at a normal position. Their orientation changes and as soon as their orientation or they get little distorted, the membrane becomes a little wavy, that stimulates generation of the impulse which is carried to the brain through this auditory nerve. Now, this is how the arrangement is. We have made it straight so that we, we are able to understand the structure. But it is not a straight tube, it is a coiled tube and it has two three-fourth turns. This is the tube which we are talking of, that is the duct. 
and it is fitted into the same shaped bony part which is known as the cochlear canal. Together these two structures make cochlea. Now when the sound waves they enter from here they have to leave from some place otherwise those sound wave, waves or those vibrations would keep moving this membrane. So once the sound waves go in our ears they would remain trapped and they would cause some kind of movement or vibration here. So we hear one word but that would keep echoing inside our ear. But if we hear one word that is a clear word that we get. That means once those vibrations have caused that stimulus to generate they escape and this window which is the round window acts as a releasing the pressure releasing point from where those pressure that pressure which is created by the sound waves is lost or is released from the ear. So this is our cochlea which is responsible for hearing. So when we talk of the ear as hearing an equilibrium organ this is the structure which helps us in hearing and the organs or the structures which help us in balancing or equilibrium those structures we have already discussed. Now in the next part we will combine all these structures and quickly go over the mechanism of hearing one more time.